Hi guys, uh, today we have honorable guest uh, Soren Sayan from Revolver Games and Philip Moster, uh, head of growth at Revolver, uh, Revolver Games. Uh, Soren, uh, very rare professional in our industry. I mean, uh, from any standpoint, uh, he was in blockchain and crypto since 2013, uh, behind dozens of uh, very successful projects uh, and uh, more than seven years in gaming industry. And right now, with the help of outstanding professional Philip Mostert, uh, with uh, uh, ability to scale and grow any uh, projects, even uh, working with the guys like uh, Google, uh, he will try to create his own uh, empire. So we'll talk today with uh, uh, those uh, two titans uh, and try to, to understand what the Revolve game is all about, Revolve Games is all about. So, uh, hi, Soran. Hi, Philip. Hi there. Hey, Aaron. Pleasure to be here. The question, the question, the question is, uh, uh, Sir, Sir, how you could describe uh, briefly what's uh, the Revolve game uh, games is all about? What are you doing? Uh, are you creating a couple of game projects? Are you creating the industry? Are you creating the platform? What's this all about for the people uh, who never, uh, never uh, have experience working with uh, with you with your uh, with your project? It's an excellent question. Uh, so uh, just to briefly uh, provide an overview about Revolve Games, uh, basically we are creating a decentralized uh, play to earn gaming ecosystem where users earn staking rewards, which is based on their in-game performance. Also, uh, our uh, gaming mechanics and token utility are delivered through multiple games that we have. Uh, so right now we are in a, a limited uh, beta for Bones and Blade card game, and we're working also on our flagship uh, Celestial Metaverse and uh, all these games are going to be connected. So basically you can play multiple games using your RPG staking tethered NFT assets. So this is kind of interconnected open sandbox experience. Thank you. Wonderful. Wonderful. Uh, so uh, I know a couple of big guys, even um, the other side, uh, thinking about to create some sort of uh, interconnected uh, metaverses. Do you have any mm -hmm. meta metaverses uh, let's say um, strategy uh, regarding uh, that uh, different gaming projects. Do, uh, do you have do you have a uh, do you have something in mind uh, to create the uh, unique space where all of the games uh, living together in one uh, some sort of metaverse? Uh, what, what about that? Could you, could you share? The sure. Should I should I give it a go, sir? And, um... Sure. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Uh, so, so basically, I mean, what uh, the way we look at the metaverse is basically going to be like this massively uh, interoperable, fun environment where it crosses devices, it crosses ecosystems, and it crosses, uh, you know, obviously uh, screens, um, you know, from a mobile phone to an AR system to a laptop. It should be completely, you know, into, intertwined into to one's life and, and living experience. Um, we're in the process of talking to a bunch of other gaming studios, other metaverse developers, uh, to look at, uh, you know, what that interoperable future might look like. Uh, we're also in the in the stages of looking at cross chains and looking at the, uh, you know, integration from a technology point of view, making sure that um, one, it, this, the, the experience is seamless um, and also the narrative also makes sense, right? So we don't also want to create this uh, massively confusing environment where all these games are just mashed up together and it just, you know, completely loses the, the lore, the L-O-R-E, you know, factor of what uh, makes the game mechanic fun. Um, we're looking at it very much from a strategic point of view in making sure that it, it complies, it, it, it makes sense to the end gamer. It doesn't detract from the game quality or the game mechanics, which is an important factor of what we try to do. Um, and also like what, what Seren was talking about early on is just, uh, you know, the earning mechanism is going to be a very important part of what we do. But what we want to like kind of position the project around is a play and earn type methodology. So we want to move away from also like, you know, all the buzzwords that are coming through from an industry perspective. What we're really focusing on is delivering a sound, uh, beautiful experience, gaming experience that obviously will attract, you know, triple A brands and triple A uh, gamers into the to the environment that what, uh, you know, obviously what we're working towards to build. Okay. Um, 
I do realize uh, you have a lot of conversations like that. So what's your uh, pitch for the, uh, let's say, uh, big gaming studio to work with uh, uh, revolver games? What's yeah. your pitch? Uh, why they should, let's say, uh, put their put their games on your platform, collaborate with you? What's yeah. the uh, offering you have, uh, let's say, to somehow uh, seduce them with yeah. uh, partnership? Yeah, I, I mean, it's, it's a fascinating question, like, because I think, you know, everyone's going after EA Sports and, you know, like Riot Games and stuff. And those are, those are uh, you know, I, I read in a, a point or a data set today that said, you know, gaming basically produces more revenue, um, you know, than music and video uh, combined, which is just a staggering number. So, you know, for us to obviously go after these larger players is incredibly important in terms of, you know, strategic growth potential. Um, you know, and as an investor opportunity, I think there's an enormous potential for, for them to come into the space through our mechanisms. We've been, you know, hard at work. Um, and it's obviously, you know, with the work of Seren and the founders, Dan and James, you know, they've built an enormously attractive and very positive community. Um, and the future of most brand development and engagement is going to come through community mechanics. So, you know, if we had to go to a, a, a AAA studio and say, you know, let's do a partnership of sorts. You know, we've done the heavy lifting, so to speak. We've built that platform. We've got that community engaged. Um, and of course, we've obviously done a lot of R&D in terms of what works and what doesn't work. So, you know, we've done a lot of the heavy lifting. But to, you know, for us to sit there and say, like, we would be, you know, grossly attractive to AAA studios at this stage, it would be naive. I think we, we're also taking it from a very realistic point of view that we need to get to a point where we're extremely happy with uh, delivery um, and again, the gaming experience itself is seamless. Um, once we have this feedback loop in place and we have developed, you know, um, you know many di different iterations of the modules from the metaverse perspective that we, we will be deploying, um, then we will be in a much more mature stage and a much more, you know, um, leveraged position to have more deeper strategic investment discussions with AAA studios. Okay, uh, we both know uh, that a lot of projects somehow uh, looks looking uh, slightly looking like you uh, was uh, in a game. Uh, I mean, in the crypto since 2017. I do recall the early months of 2017, and different type of let's say uh, crypto solutions offer offer different type of uh, ideas how to create the unique blockchain layer, crypto layer for the whole gaming. Uh, gaming market. Uh, what uh, you already learned from all of their mistakes, from all of their offerings, uh, could you, let's say, uh, explain where you are now and why they lose the game and why you will win? What's, uh, what's your unique, let's say, strategy based on, let's say, more than five years of experience uh, in, that, uh, in that sphere? Uh, what, uh, what's your unique uniqueness uh, in, uh, among different type of uh, guys trying to create that uh, crypto layer for all gaming industry? Yeah, let, let me take this one. Uh, so uh, basically, we have analyzed uh, those uh, top games, like, for example, XC Infinity uh, and, and the other similar type of games uh, before uh, coming up even with, with our white paper, with our solutions and early days of uh, development as well. So one of the key factors which we understood that similar type of games were lacking was the uh, long-term community engagement mechanics that were uh, induced into the gaming ecosystem that they have created. So that's why on a long-term perspective, if you are looking, people are really looking for kind of the short-term uh, profits. They were quickly coming, getting those, let's say, same Axie Infinity game, those Axies, playing a little bit here, there, especially early days, then cashing out, right? So they have a lot of similar type of issues uh, in terms of uh, long, longevity of the project. So uh, by realizing uh, that type of uh, issues that that uh, might that we might obviously face as well, we came up with our own unique strategy by by basically by taking uh, NFT assets that are going to be part of the metaverse and they are that are already part of our bones and blade multiplayer card game. What that that essentially means is that any uh, asset is is backed up by RPG tokens. 
so that every time any transaction is is being made, it's also uh, being made using our own native uh, Revolve Games RPG token, so that on a long term uh, there is always going to be demand and supply, right? So, and then as Philip mentioned, once the popularity of our game gr grows and we reach to this AAA quality standards and, and play uh, mechanics, uh, obviously a lot of people are going to be buying more and more of our tokens so that the constant demand will increase also based on the demand supply, the price of our token. So on the long term, we were definitely uh, are much better off than uh, X Infinity or, or other similar type of games. And then on the other hand, we, we have also introduced uh, a kind of uh, different other uh, mechanics in terms of the boosters. So, so basically our unique formula is the uh, multiplier of uh, these components. Let me recall all, all uh, unique components that we have in the formula. And uh, you will see it's quite kind of unique model. So it's a, it's a weighted average uh, model that uh, based on that you get the uh, benefits for each player. So it's a multiplier of levels that the player reaches in the game. You, you multiply that with the rarity score and then with the outstanding booster points. So every time based on your performance, you're getting also booster points. And then you multiply that with the staking a pool of your uh, RPG tokens. This is like a, a proportional to the staking pool with other players, right? So uh, uh, it makes sense for those people who are really grinding it out to get bigger benefits. And then our formula is obviously quite uh, complex yet very simple so that those people who are really grinding it out are getting the biggest benefits, which we have not, never seen at least in this extent of complexity in other games. So we really, uh, figure out this in the early days and said, let's kind of find out the best way that, that we're gonna really give this back to our community. So I think this is one of the key concepts that our members also understand that, wow, Revolt Games is really trying to revolutionize this uh, game fi, DeFi and the gaming industry. So yeah, pretty much that that's the, the biggest kind of core uh, principle. Uh, and on the other hand, we're also offering a lot of benefits for the people who are gonna be part of the Celestial Metaverse. So uh, we can briefly describe those, but a lot of land utilities, like uh, it, it can be staking and a lot of stuff. So, so generally it's, it's, it's not- Let's yeah. first, yeah. firstly, a lot of to consume. <clears throat> uh, let's. Uh, I will try to summarize that for our audience. First of all, uh, you improving the retention rate, one of the most important component of uh, game uh, economy. So you're creating some uh, sort of uh, unique strategy <clears throat> where the retention rate, uh, let's say, uh, <clears throat> improved by the beautiful catch that you are, uh, uh, every uh, game uh, blockchain game could, could let's say, uh, use. Uh, uh, you improve this. Mm -hmm percentage with uh, uh, based on the number of hours and quality of, uh, of the game exactly. of the player. One. Exactly. Secondary, you have, you have, you are trying, I'm not sure it's working, but it sounds like uh, automated market making. It sounds like you're creating some sort of Uniswap for the gaming industry. So uh, the first, uh, the first uh, component of your pitch was uh, you are creating some uh, liquidity model and you are also yes. connected Connecting those uh, uh, performance performance based uh, 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 taking uh, initiatives and uh, that automated market market making and creating creating unique economy. That's really beautiful. Let's uh, okay. let's understand uh, before we will go in depth uh, in your own <clears throat> uh, metaverse. Let's uh, discuss two different approaches. Because the metaverse also is a buzzword. We have two opportunities. We could try to create uh, next uh, next uh, level Decentraland, or we could, let's say, improve some of the games like uh, uh, like big titles with some uh, crypto economy. What's your uh, point or, or, or what do you think about that? Uh, do you feel, do you have a strategy? Uh, do you think they need that? Uh, and uh, should we, let's say, try to uh, go to the biggest big, biggest titles with uh, idea to implement some crypto economy? Uh, or we should create the new metaverses and uh, in that metaverses uh, or uh, Im implement all of that beautiful solutions and trying to, uh, let's say, replicate the best gaming experience we can uh, looking at uh, the big guys not from crypto gaming yeah. industry. 
I think, I mean, for me, I don't think necessarily it's a zero sum game. I, I don't think like there'll be one person or one project that ultimately is, is going to win everything. Um, just like, you know, a traditional tech, uh, you know, in its, in its most uh, beautiful form, there's so many different companies. There's so much uh, potential. The market is big enough for many different players and many different types of experiences. I also don't think one size fits all in this particular example. Um, you are absolutely right. The metaverse is such a buzzword. It's being thrown around loosely by uh, by people that probably don't uh, quite understand the the technology or what Web three means in its entirety. You know, including DeFi mechanics and and NFT mechanics and collectibles and liquidity and yields and all that kind of stuff that can really sit within. Um, you know, a technology solution that can be presented, you know, in beautiful formats, like through AR or even, you know, uh, augmented smell and touch and all these wonderful technologies that's going to be rolled out. Um, if you take a look at like, you know, Decentraland and Sandbox, um, these are leading metaverse projects because they were, you know, obviously early to start, but there's also other very exciting projects like Spatial, um, you know, and if you look at their daily usage uh, or de daily unique, um, you know, numbers in terms of like the audiences, they really do spike around events. And this is going to be the biggest challenge that I think um, the retail uh, or, or um, real estate uh, concept of, of metaverses will have, right? So if you take a look at uh, these, these um, metaverse, metaverse projects, they spike when they have certain events. Now, that is a big problem if you're trying to monetize that environment or you're trying to create this like, you know, engaging environment. You're going to have also a problem where a lot of these metaverses are being developed and they basically become ghost towns because no one's de developing or building inside of this experience, right? So we've identified some of these problems um, and we're also taking it, you know, from a gaming perspective, we're going to keep uh, attrition low, meaning, you know, like um, uh, use, user or, or player attrition very low, uh, making sure that the environment is as sticky and, and engaging as possible, but also make sure that the environment is rich and deeply engaging. So we're going to be working with, uh, you know, various different partners to make sure that the, the land itself is fully utilized and developed properly. Um, if you go to like, you know, some of the, the larger players like Decentraland, the experience is not only bad from a design perspective, but also there's not a lot to do, you know, and this is a problem. So why would you go back to, say, Decentraland on a daily basis if there isn't something, you know, technically happening? It is an event environment right now. So what we want to make sure is that there's something daily to go back to um, in terms of like obviously the sights and sounds and the engagement entertainment factors but the game itself is going to be something obviously that will pull people back in like an example a fun example that i think is really interesting is if you're a landowner and you're kind of squatting um, we've got this intergalactic pest type um, character that'll kind of come into your property and and you know detract the quality of of your 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 property so making sure that people are maintaining what they own, which is an exciting thing, because you know, if you own this, you made this investment, you need to go back and you need to maintain it, like anything in the physical, uh, you know, senses or definitions uh, of the word. Wonderful. So uh, let's try to understand: uh, Are you going uh, to create a new type of metaverse, or you try to you mm -hmm. integrate as the best gaming projects, uh, and let's say create some uh, some some system on top. I mean, uh, what's your strategy? Uh, are you creating a uh, uh, catchy metaverse uh, or taking all of that experience or are you trying to uh, integrate others? Uh, because so basically we, we have, we, we are also very actively kind of directly co collaborating with uh, Chromia, let's say Chainlink, uh, even Crypto.com. So with these kind of top names out there, so we are utilizing uh, the Chromia's uh, Chrom Chromia original solution while building the backend of our kind of transaction model, how these blockchain smart contracts are going to be interacting. So that was the first step that we started uh, utilizing uh, Chromia originals. And then we are also in uh, early discussions uh, since the inception, actually, with uh, Crypto.com's Cro uh, Kronos network. If you heard about them, it's like a, another type of a network that we are trying kind of to utilize and, and maybe create a hybrid model of both Chromia originals and Kronos or somehow utilize the, the advantages of both uh, solutions. Uh, and, and then uh, even even in that case, the, the, the industry is still quite new, even Chromia originals, uh, a lot of transactions are, are still going to be using AWS as well. But but we are trying to utilize the best available technologies, in, in, at least in the backend, to orchestrate our transactions and, and uh, 
metaverse activities, right? So on the other hand, uh, I think we are building something unique there as well because we have very strong partners like, like for example, Safegram, they are gonna do like the ATM machines and, and also some uh, additional mechanics of staking inside the metaverse so that players just can approach literally to ATMs, make some transactions, uh, swap their tokens and, and even while we, without leaving the game, right? Make this very interactive and, and fun experience for all the gamers. And then on the other hand, for example, MGH DAO, they're gonna uh, provide the price oracles so let's say uh, the, the land, that same land that is sold in Celestial Metaverse, it's going to be defined by the price oracle so that the price is very, uh, very much defined by the users themselves, right? The community driven pricing models and different uh, uh, fair, fairness going to be in, in the model so that people always feel it's, it's a fair price. There's no any kind of manipulations in the price. So we're literally trying to bring a lot of new ways of integrating our partners' top skills into the metaverse. I think it, it's a game, very unique. And then Philip mentioned about most of the other games are relying uh, on events so that the numbers are spiking while, while there are some certain events and activities. But I think our game is, is something more unique because it's gonna be a survival game. It's gonna be strate strategic game. So you need to think, strategize and, and kind of conquer new environments uh, so and then get get additional benefits from some unique partner models that we have already kind of very in a building mode right where we're, we're really building we're one of those rare games that never kind of step back we, we build 24 7 trying to create new environments basically okay mm. is, is the name of that game is uh bones and blade is it how so first uh, yeah, so so we started with the Apin game. That was more of a concept to show that that we can literally build a, a quite functional and interesting game. So it was a kind of more of a two D game. But uh, even the boosters that people got in that Apin game, they will be able to use uh, in, in some ways in in other games as well. Like let's say for for now, we we have recently launched Bones and Blade uh, card game uh, limited beta. So uh, uh, right now, the, the, those people who had uh, at the moment of taking that snapshot where holding uh, Revolt Games NFT assets are shortlisted to be part of the limited beta. So a couple of hundred people are right now, uh, as we speak, they are uh, uh, playing this game, Bones and Blade uh, card game. But then uh, eventually after a few weeks of bug testing and, and additional tests, we're gonna be 100% publicly available with Bones and Blade card game, which, which is a game, very unique game. So uh, we we, we are trying to kind of not not copy paste but create our own game and then after i mean simultaneously we are building the metaverse right so it's it's kind of a simultaneous experience we never stop building the metaverse while we're building the card game so the metaverse is is planned to be live in a bit later stages uh, like close to the uh, like let's say 6 to 9 months uh, to be more realistic in in this time frame estimates at the moment so yeah, and then it, as, as we mentioned earlier, it's going to be open sandbox, right? All these games are going to be connected to each other, basically. I think I think just to add on to that, like I mean, you know, we, we're in an interesting time of the of the market. Um, you know, it, it's obviously a lot of sentiments that we need to be very aware of, and what uh, we've decided, obviously, from a strategic point of view, is to make sure that we get something in our community's hands, you know, uh, um, uh, with relative uh, speed, because that will come down to. Okay a fundamental question of execution and the ability to deliver. And we have proven now with the, the limited beta, you know, in a, in a couple hundred people's hands that we are able to deliver, we are executing, we are building and we will deliver, uh, which is obviously fundamental to, um, you know, any project's potential long-term success. Um, so we're doing it in a very strategic way. We're making sure that we're delivering uh, and we're executing and we will stick by our, you know, by our cause which is, uh, it's incredibly important to address the sentiment that's potentially, you know, in the market right now. It's just, uh, uh, still uh, sounds like uh, kind of creating proof of concept, beautiful proof of concept, uh, fully uh, playable and uh, uh, and with that, uh, I, I call the tabletop, online tabletop games, because it's mm -hmm. kind of online tabletop game. Uh, 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 you showcase uh, your economy, showcase the unique instruments you have for the, for, uh, for the game developers uh, who will collaborate with you. So it's, uh, it's, it's truly a beautiful approach. It still sounds more like you are the platform, so you are creating some sort of layer 
layer of platform for the for the web uh, web based games mm-hmm. uh, as I, as because I'm really uh, trying to summarize and simplify yeah, yeah. all of that uh, ocean of information uh, for our yeah. audience. Uh, so, and I hope uh, with that tabletop game, uh, by the way, uh, Bones and Blades Google is fine. I will try to add the link uh, down below to that game um, uh, in, uh, in our YouTube. Uh, yeah. But still, uh, everybody could Google it. Uh, could, everybody could follow that. And yes. And, and then we have also instructional videos, so everybody can hop on uh, YouTube, type Bones and Blade card game, and then a short four, uh, four or five minutes uh, uh, introductory video will come. Yeah. Okay, yeah. That's, that's easy. That's easy. Bones and Blades, uh, if, if you are boring with all of our, of our discussion, if it's too complicated for some of our audience, like right now, <laughs> just Google Bones and Blades and play yeah. the table. I just like I just like the name. It just sounds. <laughs> it sounds. <Thank> you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so so to, to, to add one one more point to Philip's uh, like uh, um, uh, concept of kind of retention and and build, showing by building, right? So another interesting idea that we we earlier again identified is that we don't want our uh, also investors and, and community to wait a long time. That's why we decided to build the Celestial Metaverse in a modular fashion so that every every kind of a, uh, the bits of the worlds will be built uh, in, in, in bits and pieces, right? But then still fully functional so that at least people can go there, utilize their NFT assets and, and both enjoy the game and also why not earn from the game, right? So that's why we, we will introduce the first patch of the Celestium Metaverse in terms of the Pylon defense game. So that Pylon will be the Celestium's first city name. And then the, the interactions and the kind of the strategy game will be based on that mini kind of world environment that, that will be the first start of the uh, Celestium Metaverse. So we realized that we need to scale uh, based on the modular uh, model, which is more sustainable on long term. That was another unique approach versus other games that Revolve decided to uh, undertake, basically. Yeah, what? Wonderful. Uh, so uh, let's go slightly deeper. Uh, we both understand that uh, uh, the question which uh, game engine you will use for your metaverse uh, in the future is still on the table. I do realize that uh, it's a very complicated question you are still trying to solve. But uh, well, let's go even deeper. Let's imagine where we, uh, where it's let's imagine it's possible. What do you think about extensive uh, extensive reality metaverses? Uh, uh, what do you think about the ability to merge uh, that experience? Experience, uh, offline and online experience. Do you have any ideas in mind how to, let's say, uh, interconnect uh, those realities and uh, in some extensive reality uh, gaming experience? Uh, please sh- uh, disclose any ideas you have on yeah. that. Well, I, I'm just yeah, quickly, yeah. yeah, I'm just quickly going to say. I mean, we we have a partnership with Hololoot, which is basically an AR, uh, you know, overlay. So um, you know, you can see and you can experience some of the characters. Uh, you know, on your mobile device in front of you uh, and interact with these characters, which is going to be really fun. But I mean, we're only starting to scratch the surface of what that could be, Um, you know, and as technology evolves and and, uh, gets better, we'll be able to deliver a better experience. But we do believe in in the end of it, uh, it will, like we said, the cross device is going to be very important. It's going to be multi-sensorial, it's going to be multi-device, and it's going to be multi, uh, basically, or agnostic, so to speak. Uh, but we're already in the discussions, you know, or, or at least we've got partnerships with like what I said, Hololoot uh, early on with uh, with an AR solution. Um, and it's it's very fun uh, just to interact with these characters, which is obviously brings the narrative uh, and the storyline to life, which is uh, a fun component, which is gaming, right? Gaming should be fun. Yes. Uh, and it feels like uh, we could, let's say, create a new stream of mass adoption through that uh, uh, extensive reality or augmented reality uh, uh, games because uh, it's worth to, to surround. What do you, yeah, what so, so I, wanted, uh, yeah, I wanted to add there, but like when you said we can build new worlds, the way I understand, and there's even an economy there as well. So basically, why not the, there can be augmented reality e-commerce websites, like the WooCommerce, right? So basically, not just you sell the NFT using the, the NFT concept by, let's say, go to the Revolve Games NFT marketplace, which we eventually will build. But why not maybe we expand it even further and then build layer uh, two on top of that. That's kind of augmentation. So people can, like Philip mentioned, can we just kind of swapping their mobile just on the on the surface, they see the, the ready-made 3D models, they, they touch on, on their mobile screen or even in their VR headset and then go buy 
from the augmented or virtual reality marketplace, right? So these products with all these smart contracts embedded, the codes and everything, even right now, as we speak, I, I was checking there's that kind of solutions as well already. I don't remember right now the name of the company, but there's the, the type of solutions provided even. So I think we're close to, to that revolutionized approach as well. So people can actually look, feel, and see, touch, even zoom in, zoom out, and, and basically claim through their headset or their mobile that NFTs and, and then just put it on their uh, wallets, right? So that, that's the future. In my opinion, we're, we're basically moving towards that direction. Yes. Yeah. Uh, there's just another point. I mean, um, obviously, we, we're in the, the middle of private land sale right now, private round land sale. Uh, one of the utility cases that we're, we're developing is, uh, you know, early buyers of land can uh, use that land to advertise product and services that might be available in the real world. Which is going mm -hmm. to be a very interesting, you know, transgression between real and uh, virtual. Um, so one of the hook factors from a utility perspective is if you are early and you buy land, uh, you can use this land as basically like your your physical retail uh, option where people can go and buy from you and get the physical item delivered to you in the real world. So we're talking about partnerships that uh, obviously will enable logistics. We are we are totally open. Uh, we are fully ready for let's say metaverse. In the, to be integrated in any metaverse. Um, I, I have tried this paper. Uh, unfortunately, uh, they have uh, very poor lighting. Uh, they have, you need to cook, uh, cook light inside the, your, your 3D models. It's not easy to create the, uh, we have very beautiful geospheres. We're creating, we have outst uh, outstanding futuristic houses for our eco villages. And we are trying to put that eco villages in, inside spatial. And uh, unfortunately it's, it's impossible to recreate that experience, the beauty, the true mm. beauty of uh, our 3D models. Uh, I'm still uh, in the process of searching uh, of uh, the, uh, the metaverse. We could implement the strategy you just mentioned. It just, yes. but let's let's more more talk, let's talk about <clears throat> uh, your unique uh, let's say financial model and economics or whatever uh, in, in 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 that uh, in that sphere. Uh, let's say you could improve the retention rate. You have a, a mm -hmm. huge beautiful idea of uh, that, uh, uh, let's say, performance-based uh, 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 performance-based uh, stage improvement. Uh, it feels like it uh, could be introduced uh, to the most uh, of uh, loyalty programs in real world, because it sounds very familiar for me. Uh, uh, I, was ca I was coming also from uh, uh, gamification, uh, let's say, uh, industry, uh, working with PepsiCo and uh, other big brands like Fox TV, uh, like 11 years ago. So uh, it feels like what you are doing, it's also in that direction. It's possible to, in, to be implemented in that gamification, loyalty, uh, loyalty programs. And, that, uh, and if you could deliver the user experience uh, in that sphere, together with Hololens or whatever, uh, uh, it it could it could be possibly uh, one of the uh, main revenue stream because it feels like nobody is doing uh, that right right now. And you already uh, have revolutionary sounds like revolutionary uh, approach towards uh, uh, let's say blockchain game uh, uh, blockchain games. Maybe you could add that uh, augmented reality layer or extensive extensive reality layer and create that uh, unique uh, unique unique uh, financial ecosystem connecting the real world and online world. I just, just I'm just dreaming. But, uh, <laughs> You're not dreaming. I think that's the future that we're all trying to work towards, right? Um, you know, but I mean, um, one one of the things we will probably be rolling out relatively soon is like a merchandise option. You know, um, because from a revenue perspective, there's enormous potential around merchandise in itself. Um, but, you know, right now, what, we, what we're focusing on is the game mechanics and the build of the, you know, of the metaverse itself. And we need to get the core of our business right. And the user experience must be seamless uh, and the game play must be brilliant. Um, you know, thinking about the future, it's exciting. We can all get lost down these rabbit holes and we'll have wonderful discussions that will probably never end, you know, and our, our audiences will go to sleep uh, across the world. But um, it's exciting because we're pioneering this space and it's, uh, you know, the future is anything that we believe it to be, uh, which I think is exactly why we're all doing what we do and why we've chosen our, our careers, be it uh, a 24 seven, you know, love lost uh, type relationship with our work. Um, but what we are building is going to be beautiful. And, um, you know, but we also need to, to remember, we need to keep to a core strategy and that's delivering a, a unique game 
solid uh, economics or tokenomics around it, making sure that there's the inflationary me you know, mechanisms behind the, the earning potential, uh, making sure that also the barriers of entry aren't too high because you know, uh, Siren was talking about Axie Infinity early on, and that's always going to be everyone's benchmark uh, because they're the first intermarket and they had the most, you know, sort of mass adoption, if you call it that. Um, but they were, I mean, you know, obviously owning the Philippine space is an enormous achievement. Um, but what we need to do is we need to make sure that we deliver on our core promise and proposition to to a game experience uh, without getting too lost into too many different weird and wonderful, you know, rabbit holes. So uh, a lot of a lot of projects will probably fail because they over promise and they think they can deliver, you know, AAA studio um, experiences overnight. And this is why, you know, communities can turn very quickly into a mob because their, ma their expectations are not being managed properly. Um, so we're, we're very cautious in how we're rolling things out. We're very cautious in terms of keeping, you know, core to our fundamentals and that's delivering a very solid, beautiful game experience. Okay, uh, let's talk more about uh, the Celestium Metaverse uh, because, uh, by the way, we are not so boring. It feels like uh, we have 60,000 of viewers right now. I don't know why, but somebody is truly interesting in that type of discussions. Uh, uh, so, uh, uh, could you could you explain more uh, about the Celestium Metaverse? How you will see the future of that? Uh, not from the let's say se selling perspective uh, of that idea, but from the uh, let's say the gameplay perspective. Uh, what, what what will be uh, the life in that metaverse? How it feels? How it looks like? Uh, what the unique experience people get inside the Celestial Metaverse? Could you, let's say, uh, show us the future of that project? Could you describe? Sure. Uh, yeah. So uh, basically, we 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 are also. I wanted to uh, expand this and and thank our very talented team of designers and, and developers as well, because I, I was working also directly with the Sony, Netflix, and this top brand. So I can. 100% guarantee you that uh, like the, the top-notch quality of designers that, that we have uh, <clears throat> and they're actively kind of uh, also hiring on, on the way. These are, again, the people who work with Sony, with, with this type of top uh, AAA games as well. So these are really top-notch people. And then people are also always kind of commenting with, wow, exciting banner design. And, and so, so I think our design is also, even compared to top AAA games out there, is quite astonishing and outstanding. And, and basically, in terms of the gameplay and mechanics, as I earlier mentioned, the unique approach there is that we're trying to go with the modular structure so that the first uh, game will be pylon defense game. Uh, so pylon defense game will be kind of a, a black doors. Uh, uh, the, where, where it's, it's, they, they, there will be black doors in the biomes and then the st strategy game. So there will be obviously multiple players. It's a third person shooter game. So people need, need to kind of uh, go throughout these uh, black doors and different biome environments. Like we'll have, uh, let's say, uh, sandy environment. We'll have forest environment. So variety of biomes will be surrounding the, the this uh, pylon defense uh, first environmental game. Uh, so uh, it will consist of, let's say, preliminary. Right now, we set uh, 10 rounds where players will fight uh, creatures who will target uh, either them, both, or just uh, the pilot. So basically, what's also going to keep them very engaged is that not just you fight uh, towards each other, let's say the three of us are fighting for the resource, but also there are other uh, like enormously uh, huge, very scary, and, and very unique creatures out there, right? So the Celestial Metaverse is full of also very unique creatures. So th those are very dangerous as well. You never know what is famous for what, right? So one, one can be famous with laser attack, another one can be lava dog, like just putting a lava on you. So you need to be always watching out, not, not to turn from some, some unpredictable uh, action that, that these creatures can, can cause. So uh, another, again, inter interesting model is that we are even providing value to the long-term uh, renters of the land. So that, let's, let's imagine I, I own a big land in Celestium and that I, I was a bit busy recently. I didn't manage to play long times. So my, my land was full of creatures and, and different variety of stuff that hinders me to utilize my land, right? So in that case, even they can uh, pay uh, to, to our other guilds or players to, to basically rent it out to them so they play and clean the land or, or kind of develop their land, right? So even by passively sitting like this, you can earn 
uh, some rewards. Obviously, not as much as you are really grinding it out because as, as Aaron very excellently men mentioned before, is that our game is built on the performance-based mechanics, right? So the more, uh, the better you perform, the higher will be your rewards. And then the biggest component I wanted to add is that our boosters, right? So what's also unique, we're, we're rewarding people by boosters. So there's a, uh, there are some certain percentage chances that you will get small booster, medium booster, and, and also large boosters. So that every time people also see on, on their screens that, wow, I need to grind out more because obviously if I get, let's say, uh, medium or large booster, I will be better off versus just, just sitting idle and, and just renting out my land, right? So we, we try to think about various personas in, in our game so that everyone will feel uh, getting like a quite large of a benefit of either passively or actively playing the game, basically. Couple, couple painful questions. Uh, couple painful questions for you, sorry. First of all, uh, do you have a demo of that? Let's say future game. Do you have any any some? I mean, maybe a, uh, yes. presentation. Okay. Uh, is it is it possible to play right now in that game, or just just a video? Or, or just a... Uh, well, we have a very nice kind of demo video that that shows the the different um, uh, uh, biomes that that shows some of the creatures. Uh, yeah, that it's like a cinematic, uh, cinematically built, very professional yeah, video. Uh, the question is, uh, I do realize that uh, to uh, to to have a to make a uh, great of that type, you need at least, I don't know, let's be honest, at least uh, seven, eight, uh, even 10 millions and a couple of years. Yeah. Who do you, let's say, uh, explain? Uh, do you have that money? Uh, do you have that time? Uh, where is the timing? Uh, 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 could you just explain how you will build it? Because to be honest, uh, uh, a lot of uh, project for projects facing that uh, two very important uh, components. Uh, the timing, mm -hmm. because it's to build a great game, you need you need at least a couple of years. If you, even if even yes. uh, the whole team is not sleeping, sitting on co coffee and working uh, twenty four seven, and uh, you need at least seven, eight, ten million of dollars. It's to, it's. Mm -hmm. Very, too much maybe for crypto industry. It's a lot of money. It's a pile yes. of cash to, to burn. Yeah, uh, this is exactly, I mean, Surin was mentioning earlier on, this is why we're releasing it in a modular fashion. So obviously, as we go along, we, re, we will release stages of the game, which eventually will make up, the, obviously, the entire galaxy, right? But mm -hmm. um, to deliver it in a way that obviously delivers a, a good experience again, uh, but is in a modular fashion that uh, gets you know people playing in certain biomes, and then we will roll it out. So we are under no disillusion that it does take these type of resources. And this is the problem with a lot of Web3 projects or NFT projects are they they don't understand the business behind it. They don't understand the type of business or, or the, the you know the budgets, resources, and the time and the people that they need to develop something that they've obviously promised. So that's why we're doing it in a very strategic way. We're going to be rolling it out in modules and we're going to make sure that we deliver this in a consistent way uh, and basis to making sure that we retain, prove a case, grow the audience, bring on new members and then grow the, the, the obviously the ecosystem along with it. Yes, uh, first of all, uh, thank you so much for that wonderful, wonderful discussion. Uh, I will, uh, I'm willing to finish all of that, uh, giving the word to the Soren uh, uh, because uh, I know you have... Uh, outstanding team of professionals. Could you, let's say, uh, just uh, uh, give a couple minutes to honor their, uh, the, their hard work uh, and uh, uh, talk, uh, tell us about the, uh, uh, the guys behind all of that project? The word to you, Sran. Thank you very much. So yeah, we, we have really uh, talented uh, people uh, like Dan uh, Jensen and James. Uh, so so the founders of the Revolve Games. They they have also been uh, quite a very long time in, in the crypto space in, in different verticals, uh, also including gaming, uh, of course. So they they very well understand uh, like the the financial ecosystem and the DeFi and then the gaming mechanics. How how to make it kind of unique experience. That's why. Obviously, they, they since the early days they're trying to redefine this industry not just by words, as Philip mentioned, but just showing it twenty four seven, really grinding it out. 
and then uh, obviously every every single person I, I i might not remember there's like a lot of people by names but obviously i would like to thank all every single department like the development the the, the design marketing research and all the departments that that we have really doing kind of excellent job with with uh, the community growth and everything uh so and and then i wanted to to uh, finalize and, and and also thank uh of course elmas land for providing us this uh, very unique uh, opportunity and then i i was really uh a pleasure to to talk to you aaron and then you you're like it's just you have very unique style of, of holding this type of uh uh kind of amas and that we would appreciate definitely to to meet very very often together maybe some sort of we're thinking about hosting some podcast or some fireside chat so you will definitely be one of our early guests if you kind of find time of course so we'll be really very happy to to host you as well um, and then I, I wanted to also briefly touch upon this uh, place uh, prepare kind of how, how we can collaborate right uh, like because especially in a bear market I think uh, no not just in bear market but especially in this part of the uh, very season, I think more, more and more we need to expand and collaborate with, with such uh, interesting project as you have also built, guys. So I was imagining, I mean, our team was imagining we can at least collaborate in terms of uh, like somehow bringing your project to, to our metaverse or kind of cross uh, promoting. Well, why not? You you mentioned excellent uh, point that, that maybe there should be traversing metaverses, right? So there should be both physical and then the virtual metaverse and then kind of somehow we traverse and, and uh, play out both together. And then maybe people uh, who prefer physically can visit Elmas Land in a physical environment. Those who prefer to play and, and get some unique rewards, NFTs or something, maybe can, can come and play in our uh, game in, in a Celestial Metaverse. So, yeah, I mean, uh, it's just, uh, as, as Philip also mentioned, it just depends on our uh, imagination, right? I think this is this is also very, that's why my, me personally, and I think uh, all of us as well, we were in this field because we feel we are we're literally building something new and, and bringing this to the world right so that's like our baby and like you deliver some some very very unique product to the world i think that that's what makes us also accomplished on a self level and also on a team level so that's why i'm, I'm really thanking god every every single day that i'm in, in the crypto and blockchain space because there are endless opportunities right so we are literally creating a new 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 metaverse if you can call it metaverse or any other word but yeah basically that that's what, what should make us every each of us elmas land and every other company out there very proud for why they chose to be in a blockchain crypto space thank you so much again for so providing this unique uh, we will definitely evaluate the, uh, the opportunity to create the digital twin of elmas land inside the thank Celestia. you so much Celestia. pleasure Yes. Uh, it will be very exciting. I'm, I'm sure our community will be very excited. And as Philip mentioned, we have very, very uh, super uh, helpful community. The people who, who really will, will hop on, um, I'm sure they will buy land. And then as Philip mentioned, right now we're in, in a private land sale and then soon we're going to launch also public land sale. So, so we're, we're happy to, to give you also very special tariffs for, for buying a land on, on uh, Metaverse as well. Obviously as a, the lowest rate as, as a partner, so we'll give you the best uh, build. It's, for us, it's uh, obviously not just the land by itself, but what we can build together, right? If, if you feel there's a mutual uh, benefit for both projects, we're, we're just very much willing to jump on and start building together and, and experience this exciting new world, right? So. Yes, we have already uh, 3D models developed, so we have very beautiful uh, 3D so it's easy to let's say import uh, all of that uh, 3d models inside any game uh, gaming environment so let's talk about that thank you